Today we'll learn about the tribes of Montana and how they got their names. This subject takes us back to the early 1800s when sign language was commonly used to communicate with people who didn't know each other's languages. Of the names we use today for Montana tribes, some come from names other tribes gave them, and others came from European misunderstandings of sign language. We'll learn the signs used to refer to the different tribes, some of which were misinterpreted and led to the names we use today. We will also learn the names the tribes used to refer to themselves. To begin, listen to the names we use today for the tribes of Montana and get a sense of where they now live. Assiniboine. Blackfeet. Chippewa. Cree. Crow. Grovant. Kootenai. Northern Cheyenne. Pondere. Salish. Sioux. In the 1830s, a fur trader named Warren Ferris was intrigued by some of the strange and inappropriate names he heard for tribes in the region. According to Ferris, many tribes had names that described some physical characteristic, flat heads, pierced noses, big bellies, but that none of the tribes displayed the noted physical traits. He wrote about this in his journal. For the first group, the flatheads, he noticed that not one showed any signs of a deformed head. For the next group, the Nez Perce, pierced nose in French, he didn't see anyone with a pierced nose. And finally, he reported that the Gros Vent, big belly in French, are as slim as any other Indians. What are the sources of these unusual names? We believe that many of these misnomers came about because European travelers long ago misinterpreted sign language. See, the universal language was, was uh, sign language. For those who didn't speak other languages, the tribes of the Great Plains developed a way to communicate through signs. No one knows how old this language might be. How do we learn about sign language? The most important source is the people themselves. Some people still speak sign language, and many of their grandchildren understand it. I remember my grandfather, and when he would talk to us, he'd sign. I mean, it's, it's that old Indian can't hold his hand still. And so we learned a lot of the different signs for different things, like me, you, you know, the simple signs. Um, and some of the tribal signs, what, what they called each other, and clan signs. You know, each, each tribe had their own sign for themselves. And then another tribe would have a sign for them as they saw them. Another source of information comes from research done over a century ago when sign talking was a common practice. We integrate sign language information from a book by W.P. Clark, who spent time with many Indian tribes in the 1870s and 80s, learning all he could about sign language. Another source of information comes from tapes made at the 1930 Sign Language Preservation Conference held in Browning, Montana. This sign talker gathering brought together the best of the sign talkers who still lived in the area in 1930. It was easy to get confused if you were a traveler from afar because of variations in signs from one tribe to another and from one person to another. Names reflect different points of view and they are not necessarily the same from place to place. People have names they call themselves but other people don't usually use these names. Instead, tribes carry names given by others. These names vary depending on the relationships with neighbors. You might understand this better when you think of your own neighborhood. 
Maybe you have neighbors you refer to by the color of their house, the kind of car they drive, or something they do that you think is funny. Let's look at an example from a tribe that used to be part of Montana, the Northern Shoshone and Bannock people who now live at Fort Hall, Idaho. The sign commonly used for Shoshone by Plains tribes is shown by Rob Collier from the Nez Perce tribe. Shoshone. The term snake for the Shoshone is a misnomer. Ronald Snake Edmo explains this to us. In our cultures, we refer to ourselves either as the location that we come from or the type of food that we eat. Like uh, the, what is known today as the Lamhai Shoshone, they're, they call themselves the Agaduka, which means salmon eaters. And of course, the, the sign language that was used on the plains was a waving motion. Well, the white people thought that meant a snake, so they called us the snake Indians. We call ourselves Nuba, or the people. Another misnomer is the name Nez Perce, people who live just west of Montana. Lewis and Clark had been told about these people and may have been the first to confuse the name. From the Shoshones on August 14, 1805, Meriwether Lewis learns of some people whom he refers to as pursed nose Indians. Lewis apparently misconstrues the gesture, the original meaning of which is unknown. W.P. Clark reports that the gesture of passing the index finger under and close to nose is the common sign for the Nez Perce. But he also mentions that the Blackfeet sometimes make the sign for powder because the people we know as Nez Perce used a bluish black paint to paint themselves. Blackfeet speakers still refer to the Nez Perce as the Blue Mud People. The Blackfeet people, they called us the Blue Powder or Blue Mud People because we, that was what we painted our faces with, was a, a, a blue paint made from a blue powder or blue mud. Nez Perce people say they never pierce their noses. They call themselves Nimipu. Nimipu means uh, that's what we call ourselves, Nez Perce. It means we the people. So you can better understand how sign language can be misinterpreted. You'll be watching the signs for tribes of Montana and writing down what you think they mean. We're not going to tell you which tribe is which the first time through. You're going to want to take out a pencil and paper and number your page from 1 to 13, since you'll be guessing the meaning of 13 signs. There are no wrong answers. Just use your imagination and have fun. You'll have 10 seconds to complete your guess before the next sign appears. We'll show you the signs again afterward when we discover how the tribes of Montana got their names, many of which were misunderstandings of the signs. Using your pencil and paper, watch the signs and write down what you think they mean. You might not have heard the name before, so just write down what you think the sign shows following the gesture made by Rob Collier. Sign number one, what do you think this sign means? Number two. Number three. Just imagine if you were traveling long ago and had to watch those signs along with all sorts of other information. I bet there were lots of misunderstandings. Now let's go back through history and see how the tribes in western Montana got their names. This is where you can compare your guess with the interpretation others made long ago. The sign number will appear before each sign we review so you can compare it to your guess. In western Montana, three tribes live on the Flathead Reservation, the Kootenai, the Ponderay, and the Salish. Rob Collier shows us one sign for the Kootenai. Sign number one. K 
Kootenai, sign for white-tailed deer. People of the white-tailed deer. We say Kootenais today, but the word Kootenai doesn't really mean anything in the language. It was a name that was given, I assume, from some other tribe, what they called us. And then it was a mispronunciation of whatever that word is because none of the other neighboring tribes, it doesn't mean anything in their language either. So, but what, how the Kootenai always referred to themselves was through their tribal affiliation, through their specific band. In past history, the people were called Ktunaha, and the way that you pronounce it, it can mean slightly different things. One of the ways is that it means eating food plain, you know, with no seasoning. The other translation of it, let's say we went into battle with, uh, with our enemies, and one of us shot an arrow into, our, into one of our enemies and killed them. Somebody would go over there and pull the arrow back out and lick the blood off of the arrow. That's Tunaha. There are seven bands of Kootenais, the band that lived in the area that's referred to today as Montana, is the Ksanka band. The band Ksanka is a standing arrow. The Ponderay are also based on the Flathead Reservation in their original homeland. This is the Upper Ponderay. The Lower Ponderay, or the Kalispell tribe, live in eastern Washington on the Ponderay River. This name is a French term for earrings, probably derived from sign language. Number two, Pondere. Sign indicates ear pendant. Pondere. When the first uh, white man came to this area, there was a lot of the Indian men that wore a, an earring or earrings, and they used the, the shells, the abalone shells, and the different kinds of shells to, for decoration. And I was only imagining that the, that the first Frenchman that came through the area seen that protrusion coming from an ear, and so they call us Pondere. The proper name for Pondere the name by which they call themselves is Kalispe. The Ponderays called themselves Kalispe, uh, and that became mispronounced into Kalispel. The Salish are the third group that makes up the people of the Flathead Reservation. Salish, a term used to designate Salish-speaking tribes. Rob Collier shows us the sign used for the Salish. Number three. Salish. Sign indicates head flat on sides. Apparently some early French traders misinterpreted this sign to mean flathead, as evidenced by the use of the term tête plot, which means flathead in French. In September of 1805, Lewis and Clark arrived at camp of these people on the Bitterroot River. William Clark adds to the confusion about names by recording another name in his journal. They call themselves Otlashoot. According to Louis Adams, this term was a misunderstanding. Not only was the flathead a misnomer, so was Otlashoot. When the Indians, our people, met Lewis and Clark's band, and due to the communication they had to use sign language, well, one of their, their people must have told three eagles just, just like that, you know, where are you people f from? Where do you live? And he probably, because they met him way up in, uh, up in the high country. So he probably just turned around and said, to the shoot, down below. And that's what that means. So they wrote it down, Otla shoot, and that wasn't right, you know. To the shoot is down below. The Salish called themselves Skalich, meaning the people. Let's review. In western Montana, three tribes live on the Flathead Reservation, the Kootenai, the Ponderay, and the Salish.
The Salish are also known as flatheads, although that's a misnomer, as we've discussed. The Kootenai call themselves Ktunaha, and the Pondere call themselves Kalispe. The Salish call themselves Skeli, meaning the people. Now let's head east of the Continental Divide. In Montana, there are six reservations on the east side of the Divide. The Blackfeet Reservation, Rocky Boy, Fort Belknap, Fort Peck, Crow, and Northern Cheyenne. Number four, what do you think this sign means? Number five. Number six. There are three groups of Blackfeet, two in Canada, the Blackfoot, or Siksika, and the Blood, or Gainai, and another group of two bands, one in Canada and another on the Blackfeet Reservation in Montana, known as the Begunny, or some people say Pagan. The three bands are referred to as the Blackfoot Confederacy. Number four. Blackfoot, the sign indicates black moccasins. Blackfoot. Number five. Blood, the act of wiping off a bloody nose. This is a misnomer. The sign actually referred to the way they painted their faces. Blood. Number six. Pagan or begunny in our language. The sign represents rubbing cheek with rawhide spot in a robe. The Blackfeet people, or the Pikani as they're known in their language, or the spotted robes. No one knows for sure why this large tribe got the name Blackfeet. Some say that another group observed them walking across some scorched earth that had turned their moccasins black, and that's how they got their name. The name Blackfeet? is a name that was given to us by the federal government. It's a federal distinction that we use, but we call ourselves Nitsitapi, the real people. Let's review. The Pagan Blackfeet, or Pekani, live on the Blackfeet Reservation. They call themselves Nitsitapi, the real people. What do you think this sign means? Number seven. The name Grovant means big belly in French. The Grovant tribe is based on the Fort Belknap Reservation. Number seven. Grovant, sign for the falls. People of the falls. To explain the origins of the name Grovant, tribal representative Daryl Martin suggests it is a misnomer. This misinterpretation of the falls people were actually from the South Fork of the Saskatchewan River, and it's pretty high up north. And the sign language, of course, is for falls. And then uh, we're also known as the white clay people, because we used to, um, dig white clay and that would clean your robes. Um, 
One of the misinterpretations by the French was the sign language. Of course, the falls as, as your hands fall down, and they misinterpret that as uh, big belly. So gros ventre in French means big belly. Uh, so that's just a misinterpretation of the name. Our, our official names in my language is Aa Ni Nin, which means upright man or upright person, um, or otherwise uh, white clay or falls people. The misnomer of Gros Vent came about from a misunderstanding of the sign language for the falls Indians, who were also known as white clay or upright people. Let's review. The Gros Vent are based at Fort Belknap. The name Grovant is a misnomer based on a misunderstanding of sign language. They were called the Falls people or White Clay people by their neighbors and called themselves Aa Ni Nin, which means upright man or upright person. What do you think this sign means? Number eight. The Assiniboine people of Montana are split between two reservations, Fort Belknap and Fort Peck. I am a part of the Wadopana Band and the Hude Sanak Band. They're um, the Red Bottom Clan and the um, Canoe Paddlers. That's what Wadopana means is Canoe Paddlers. Number eight. For Assiniboine, the sign, the act of paddling canoe men. Canoe paddlers. The French gave the word Assiniboines to Assiniboines, but the Ojibwe called us cooks with stone, people who cook with stone, and the French interpreted it as Assiniboines, so that's how we got the name Assiniboine. Otherwise, we know it ourselves as Nakota, Nakota people. So we're Assiniboine to the French, but to us, we're Nakota people. Let's review. The Grovant and one band of Assiniboine are based at Fort Belknap. Another band of Assiniboine, or Nakota, is based at the Fort Peck Reservation along with the Dakota and Lakota Sioux. The word Assiniboine is a misinterpretation by some early French visitor of a name given to those people by the Ojibwe. It meant stone boilers. The Assiniboine call themselves. We know it ourselves as Nakota, Nakota people. Number nine. What do you think this sign means? The Great Sioux Nation includes the various groups of the Lakota, Nakota, and Dakota. Most people from these tribes live in South Dakota and some in North Dakota, as well as Montana. Lands were reserved for Sioux people in Montana on the Fort Peck Reservation. The name Sioux, meaning snake, was created by early French Canadian traders who abbreviated the name by which another tribe referred to the Dakota. Nadewe Sioux. Iroquois snake. There is disagreement about the word Sioux and where it came from. Listen to Jesse Taken Alive tell about the name Lakota. We refer to ourselves as the Lakota, and the book's called that particular group, uh, Sioux. And what is, uh, has to be corrected is that as Lakota people, we uh, literally translate that word as friends and allies. And because we are friends and allies, means that we are friends and allies to ourselves first. And we must be truthful to ourselves first. And then we go on with that way of life and living as we have been for uh, centuries. Number nine, Dakota or Sioux. Sign is necklace people, not cutthroat as sometimes interpreted. A cutting edge is always represented by the little finger. Necklace people. The Dakota, Lakota, and Nakota have names for their own groups. Yankton, for example, referred to people from the faraway villages.
Let's review. Lands were reserved for Sioux people in Montana on the Fort Peck Reservation. The name Sioux comes from an abbreviation of an Ojibwe word with a French-Canadian twist. The Great Sioux Nation includes the Lakota, Dakota, and Nakota. Each one of these has many bands with their own names. What do you think this sign means? Number 10. The Crow Reservation is home to the Crow. Crow is thought to be a faulty translation of their name for themselves. Apsaloge. In the language of our sister tribe, the Hidatsa, Apsaloge means children of the large beak bird. Other tribes would imitate a bird in flight when referring to the Apsaloge in sign language. Number 10. Crow, Apsaloge. Sign represents beating of wings. Children of the large beak bird. The whites interpreted this as the crow, and thus called them Crow Indians. The crow are divided into two bands. River Crow, Bidneza Pela, Mountain Crow, Awahamelech Baga. Let's review. The Crow Reservation is home to the Apsaloge, also known as Crow. The name crow is a misinterpretation of sign language for a Hidatsa word that means children of the large beak bird. The crow call themselves Apsaloga. What do you think this sign means? Number 11. The Cheyenne of Montana are based on the Northern Cheyenne Reservation, just east of the Crow. The name Cheyenne came from the French understanding of a Sioux term. The Sioux called us Shahilas, which meant the people of the alien speech. Number 11, Cheyenne. The sign means striped arrow feather. Striped arrow feather. The name for Cheyenne is in reference of how, they, how their arrow um, feathers are. There's a lot of reverence for arrows and a and, um, lot of the regalia and their moccasins. We call ourselves Chista, which means the people. Let's review. The Northern Cheyenne are based on a reservation just east of the Crow. Cheyenne is a misunderstanding by the French of a Sioux word. The Northern Cheyenne call themselves We call ourselves Chista, which means the people. Number 12. What do you think this sign means? Number 13, what do you think this sign means? The Chippewa and Cree of Montana have lived together so long they are like one group of people, although they are originally from separate tribes. One band has reserved lands on the Rocky Boy Reservation. The Little Shell Band of the Chippewa Cree has no reserved lands. They are based in Great Falls. Rob Collier shows us a sign for the Chippewa, number 12. The sign means timber people, the same sign used for all Eastern Indians. Timber people. Chippewa comes from the Algonquin word for puckering, 
but the Chippewa refer to themselves as Anishinaabe, meaning original people. Rob Collier shows us a sign for the Cree, number 13. Cree, the sign means rabbit men. Rabbit people. The Plains Cree call themselves Nihinawag, which translates to those who speak the same language. Cree also refer to themselves as Inawag, meaning plain, genuine, natural people. Let's review. The Chippewa and Cree live on the Rocky Boy Reservation. The Little Shell Band of the Chippewa Cree has no reserved lands. Neighboring groups on the plains called the Chippewa Timber People. The Cree are known by some of their neighbors as Rabbit Men. The Chippewa call themselves Anishinaabe, meaning original people. The plains Cree call themselves Nihinawag which translates to those who speak the same language. Cree also refer to themselves as Inawag, meaning plain, genuine, natural people. I bet you would like to see those signs again. Stand up, make sure you have room to spread your arms, and see if you can learn these signs by following along. Kootenai, sign for white-tailed deer. Pondere. Sign indicates ear pendant. Salish. Sign indicates head flat on sides. Blackfoot. The sign indicates black moccasins. Blood. The act of wiping off a bloody nose. Pagan or begunny in our language. The sign represents rubbing cheek with rawhide spot in a robe. Grovant, sign for the falls. Or Assiniboine, the sign, the act of paddling. Dakota or Sioux. Sign is necklace people. Crew. Upsaloga. Sign represents beating of wings. Cheyenne. The sign means striped arrow feather. Chippewa. The sign means timber people. Cree, the sign means rabbit men. Look at all that you have learned. You know all the tribes of Montana and where they live. You know the names they call themselves and what others call them. You know which ones are misnomers and how they came to be used, and you know the signs for each of these tribes. Now go practice with each other. Mm -hmm.